Okay, so we're going to talk about logarithmic functions and their graphs in this screencast. And first of all, let's define what a logarithm is. We've got a couple of important points to make right here, namely that a must be greater than zero and a cannot equal one. Okay, and x is always positive as well. So with those three conditions, we can define what a logarithm is. It says that y equals the log of x base a if and only if x equals a to the y. Gosh, that sounds confusing, doesn't it? But just notice this. y equals this whole logarithm right here. And what is y over here? y is the exponent. So what that means is logarithms are nothing but exponents. OK? If you can remember that, then you'll know the key to understanding logarithms. Logarithms are just exponents. So how do we use that information? Well, what if I asked you to evaluate the log of 16 base 2? What that is asking is, what is the power of 2 that equals 16? And the answer is 4. So the log of 16 base 2 is 4, because 2 to the fourth equals 16. So here's the logarithmic form. There's the exponential form. OK, this is called a common log. You notice there's no base written right there. Since there's no base written there, we assume it to be 10. That's called a common logarithm. And this is saying, what is the power of 10 that gives us 1,000? And the answer is 3, because 10 to the third equals 1,000 logarithmic form, exponential form. OK, so let's look at some properties of logarithms. And these are all really important, so you need to memorize these. The log of 1 of any base, doesn't matter what the base is, the log of 1 of any base will be 0, because any number raised to the 0 power equals 1. OK, the log of a base a will equal 1, because a to the 1 equals a. And that's just really a special case of this property right here. The log of a to the x base a is x. And the log of a raised to the log of x base a is x. So these are called the inverse properties. And finally, if I have a log of x base a equal to a log of y base a, so in other words, if these two bases are the same, then I can just drop the logs and set the x equal to the y. That's called the one-to-one -one property. All right, so if I asked you to solve this, notice that this log on the left is base 2. This log on the right is base 2. We can use the one-to-one -one property and just say that x minus 3 has to equal 9, so x is 12. All right, how do we graph logs? Well. Logs are actually inverses of exponentials. And you may recall that if we wanted to graph y equals 2 to the x, it's going to go through the point 0, 1. It's going to have a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. And then it's going to go have points at 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8, because 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4, and 2 cubed is 8. So this is y equals 2 to the x. And we've got a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis, right? OK, so the way we can graph inverses is to reflect them over the line y equals x. And so this point at 0, 1 now goes to 1, 0. This point at 1, 2 goes to 2, 1. This point at 3, 8 goes to 8, 3. OK? And instead of having a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, I am now going to have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. And so your graph of your logarithm is just an exponential graph that's been flipped, reflected, over the line y equal x. 
So this is y equals the log of x base 2. Okay, so there's a special kind of logarithmic function called the natural logarithmic function, and we write it ln of x. And there's nothing mysterious about it. It just says that the base is the number e. And e is that irrational number that's, you know, approximately 2.718, etc. So lots and lots of things use logarithmic functions that are base e. So instead of writing that all the time, we just use a shorthand and say it's ln of x. They work just the same as any other logarithm. So let's simplify these expressions, okay? So we're going to change 1 over e to e to the negative 1. And by this property right here, we can say that the natural log of e to the negative 1 has to be negative 1. How about the e raised to the natural log of 5? Well, since this base here matches the base of our log, we just say that's equal to 5. Okay, how about 1 third the natural log of 1? Well, let's go back to our properties. Remember what the log of any base 1 is? It's always 0. All right, how about 2 times the natural log of e? Well, that's 2 natural log of e to the first, so that's 2 times 1, which is 2. Natural log of e squared is 2. And e raised to the natural log of x plus 1 is x plus 1. And that's pretty much what you need to know about logarithms.